Morning live, thanks for staying with the show. Uh, as we tried before the break, uh, we were chatting about uh, the European Film Festival, which goes virtual with an excellent lineup of 12 brand new films, all of them premiering in uh, the country. We've re established our connection with the festival's curator and co director, Peter Rovick. He joins us on Zoom. A very good morning and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, thanks. Thanks for connecting. Uh, Peter, the festival is now in its seventh edition. Can you take us through how it's grown over the years? Yeah, it, it's really a, a showcase of uh, a selection of films from participating member states of the European Union. Um, and we have been presenting it in three cities, Johannesburg, Cape Town and Pretoria. Uh, Durban also at one stage was part of that. So this year, obviously, everything has changed. And in keeping with the precedent set by other festivals in South Africa, we've gone online. It's virtual. Um, we still are servicing the, the arts lovers out there. They are able to watch the films online. Um, also, it's free this year. You know, people are having hard times with their pockets. Income is not as uh, much as it used to be. So most of the films, it's just one film out of the 12 that's not free. But that does help uh, people to watch it in the comfort of their own homes. The selection of the films, many of them premiering in the country, can you tell us uh, about them? We said that there's a couple from the new world, a couple from the old world. I see there's one on Greta Thunberg too, which looks a little bit like a, a documentary type of movie. Yes. Well, we've described it as being then and now we, because we start in the... Middle Ages with the film Narcissus and Goldman, the legendary story by Hermann Hesse, which is uh, filmed by Oscar-winning Austrian director uh, Stefan Ruzowitzki, but move into the 20th century, around the middle there, where we uh, pick up on the film In the Dusk, uh, uh, an exquisitely filmed uh, film from Lithuania. Um, then in the same period, we have Homefront, it's our Belgian film, focusing on the Algerian war, or all issues surrounding that, I should say. And still in the 20th century, we, we come to the Italian film, The Traitor, which scooped all of, nearly all of the awards at the Italian Annual Film Awards. And that's a mafia story uh, true, based on a true incident which resulted in the arrest of over 300 mafia members, I have to say. Then we move into the 20th century. Around 2003, the, the German film Curveball uh, speaks about the, uh, an, an Iraqi refugee who comes with this information. It turns out to be fake news, which is part of the justification by the Americans to invade Iraq in 2003. They're family dramas, Becoming Mona, I should mention, uh, One Careful Owner is a Light, it's our Spanish film, a very light re a relationship film. In fact, relationships are a very core issue in all, all of our films this year. Uh, Proxima, mother-daughter relationship, set against the backdrop of a, of a French astronaut about to leave, and she has to confront issues about her career or her family. Uh, and then moving up into the very present time, we, we have films such as Sweat, which focus on social media. And social media obviously has become such an important part of our lives, especially since lockdown. And uh, it's about a fitness instructor who... Uh, has a, she's a celebrity on social media, an influencer, and how she copes or doesn't cope with her online life. So that's very interesting. And then the two documentaries, the eighth is about the repealing or the campaign, the grassroots campaign to repeal the Eighth Amendment in Ireland, uh, which, which criminalized abortion. And this is a very interesting process of how they accomplished that. And on the very divisive topic, of course, of abortion and bringing it right up to date, two films, Mogul Mowgli, uh, set in the UK about a, a young rapper uh, on the verge of big stardom, about to make a tour, and he's cut down with a severe illness. It's a brilliant uh, um, acting by Riz Ahmed. I'm sure people are familiar with Riz Ahmed. Uh, and then our final film, taking us into the future, as you will is that film you mentioned, I Am Greta. Greta Thunberg, she's really raising our awareness about the climate catastrophe the whole world is facing. And that really uh, brings us, as I say, into the future. So it's, it's an arc of, uh, of films crossing that span of time. Why are these films important for South Africans and for the country? Yeah, these films are, are all from Europe, representing some of the 
uh, film industries in the respective countries. But, you know, they're human stories and we, are, we can relate to, to these just as easily as anybody else. We have our own context, obviously, in South Africa. But when I say these films are about relationships, it's about dependency or dominance, competition, conflict, about love, about race, caste and culture. And these are the issues that also affect us here in South Africa. So people will be able to experience and, and relate to, to these films just as well. But what's been some of the challenges oh, the of taking challenge? the festival online? Yeah, there's quite a new world of technology that we are, are working with, but the process of booking the films is very simple. It takes you less than a minute. You just enter your password, your, uh, you create your own password, and you'll get an email providing you the link, and you can be watching the film in, in a matter of minutes. Um, we've, it's, it's running pretty smoothly. We've already had a, over more than a 1,000 people watching it in the first couple of days. We're also doing couple of live events, uh, limited with all the protocols, COVID protocols in place. Uh, I'm very pleased to say Earth Life Africa in, in Johannesburg ran a good event yesterday showing the Iron Greta film with discussion afterwards about the climate issues. We had something in Kailicha at the Isi Vivana Center. So that's a side event. Alongside the screening of the films, we are having these discussions, live Zoom meetings with film directors. Uh, to raise the issues and discuss the issues that are raised in their films. You mentioned that the festival is free bar for the one, which is I Am Greta, which you mentioned. There is a 50 rand uh, watching fee or admission fee, if you like. Uh, why, why, why the 50 rand? Well, we wanted to focus uh, attention on this this matter of climate action, climate justice in our country. Uh, and at the end of the festival, the proceeds from those uh, ticket prices will be uh, presented to one, of, one or other of the climate action organizations in our own country. But it is an opportunity to, to alert our public. You know, the, this film, she, she's such an icon, this teenage climate activist, and she really has uh, brought the attention to the world of the importance of the critical climate catastrophe that does face the planet. And uh, we are just trying to support that effort by um, focusing on this film in particular. Can you explain how uh, I could even go and watch some of these films? Yes, as I say, you would just go to the website. It's www.eurofilmfest.co.za, Eurofilmfest. Um, and you just there's a there's a place you just create an account as I say it's really very quick you just put your name you create a password they send you an email and then you commence your watching quite simple I mean I think people are getting used to the process of watching things online at this this time and uh, we've we've had very few uh, issues with the technical we we pleased that it's going smoothly so we encourage people to to log on and you can create your own library you book in advance what i should say is that once you book a film you have five days to watch it so if you book it today you've still got another four four days before that film will expire People are reminded that the festival will end on the 22nd, that's Sunday the 22nd, so please watch everything before midnight. These are brand new films. Uh, some of them haven't even been released in their own countries, so it's an opportunity to get a taste of what's coming out of Europe right now. Uh, many of these films were, a number of them were selected for the Cannes Film Festival this year. Others have just recently premiered at Toronto and at Venice. So it's a tre tremendous lineup, a great opportunity. We hope people will, will come online and watch, watch the, while they are here. Sure, sounds incredibly exciting. Thank you so much. That's Peter Rorvik. He's the creator, a uh, curator rather, and uh, co-director of the European Film Festival. And uh, we we're just talking about the uh, seventh instalment of the festival, which uh, this year is running virtually uh, from the 12th. So it's already gotten underway and it'll run until the 22nd of November.